So guys, welcome back to Fenrir, and today we have the one and only English Mastiff, Eileen. And as you can see, we're outside with a little bit of lead work uh, practice this morning. So we've been following the perfect puppy course with Eileen. We've been doing lots of lead work drills, some heel work drills inside low distraction, and she's really getting there. Now, what we're noticing is as we're starting to try and layer up the distraction level and bring it outside into the real world environment so we can start to get to that point where we can take her for a walk and that when she is out walking, she knows to heel walk perfectly, that as soon as any lead pressure is applied with the slip lead, which is my hands down favorite tool in dog training, I think it's the combination of the, all the different environmental stimuli is forcing her into a bit of a freeze pattern and she's digging her heels in. Now, this is another classic example of the difference in breeds. Um, a more high drive, more intelligent, easier to train, easier to please or eager to please breed. Your Malinois, your Shepherds, your Labradors, your Golden Retrievers find this stage really easy, especially because they're so active and want to be outdoors. English Mastiffs, very stubborn, not as intelligent much lower energy, don't really have a desire to be out here, find it much more difficult and she's now getting into a pattern where when we're trying to do these drills outdoors, she's going stubborn, she's digging her heels in and she's not wanting to do it. The problem with that is, is that this is where a lot of people then would give up, move over to something like a harness, which then furthers the issues, the dog learn, doesn't learn how to communicate with a handler on a lead, it leads to terrible pulling, reactivity, communication breaks down, relationship breaks down, and it's a really bad thing. So what I'm gonna show you here is a drill of how I layer up all the hard work we've been doing with basic heel commands indoors and applying communication through the lead with some very basic lead pressure to help Eileen understand that she's in control and she can turn that pressure off. And all she needs to do to turn that pressure off is come to me, follow my guidance and direction, and then we're gonna lavish on the praise, rewards, and fuss. I've got a pocket full of treats today, and I'm gonna go through that process and show you exactly how I do it. So to start with, just to give you a better demonstration of what I mean, I want to show you what happens. If I try and apply lead pressure here and get Eileen to come to me, you notice she's really starting to dig her heels in, she's getting very stubborn, and she's fighting against the pressure. What that means is that we're not communicating effectively. So to be fair to her, I'm gonna release the pressure. Now, like I say, the worst thing I could do in this situation, and this is where so many people make so many mistakes, the only reason I wanted to do that was to show you I've just taken a massive loss there by applying pressure, her digging her heels in, and then me releasing the pressure. Because through operant conditioning and canine behavior and psychology and the way that dogs learn, pressures come on, She's displayed a behavior of freeze, digging in, don't wanna do it, pressure comes off. So what she's learned is that when she feels that pressure to freeze, dig in, be stubborn, not want to follow any kind of guidance from myself, so the next time she feels that pressure, she's gonna do the same thing. That is gonna to get to a point where you're gonna to struggle to walk her with a tool like a slip lead. And again, that's where so many people will then go to a harness because it doesn't apply any pressure or communication which then means that, like I just discussed, you're gonna get all the other problems. Harnesses can be a great tool when they're used positively after you've already got a dog that can really easily communicate with you. They're terrible tools if you use them as a solution to bad communication through the lead. So what I'm gonna show you is how we kind of combat that and how I'm gonna help Eileen learn to switch off that pressure in a positive, fun, praise-based way. So this is very much a balanced training method. We're using lead pressure, but we're also using positive reinforcement, food work and training to help her overcome that. Again, if this was Riley, Joe's Labrador out here, this would take one time and she'd learn, oh, that turns the pressure off and I get a treat, that's amazing. With Eileen, this might take me days of doing this for three or four minutes, three or four times a day to get her to really start to comprehend that. Realistic expectations, calm, consistent leadership to set her up for success. So let's go through that process. So you're gonna see a combination and it happens really quickly. Lead pressure goes on. I use a law to get her to come to me. Lead pressure goes off when she makes that decision, then she gets praise. So what I need to do is unpick in her mind, lead pressure goes on, I panic, dig my heels in, to lead pressure goes on, oh, that means I need to come to you and follow that pressure, that shuts it off, and then a good thing happens at the end. So, Eileen. So I'm gonna get her attention. So lead pressure comes on, she follows it off, yeah, 
yes, good girl, good girl. So my timing was a little bit off there because I was trying to talk you through the process, but we're going to drill that over and over again. And that's what I want you to look at. So this is another lovely example. So this would be a, an example of pulling. She's now applying pressure. She needs to learn to turn that pressure off. Eileen, come on. So we've still got the pressures on very, very lightly. As soon as she makes that decision, come on, she's nearly there. Come on. Come on. Oh, so close. Just wanted to make that, that decision. You can do it. Yes, good girl. Yes. So that was a really good example. So what you saw there was the second she made that decision to come to me, the pressure went off and she got praised and rewarded. So let's try and do that a few times in a row. And I might struggle to keep up the commentary because I really need to focus on her to help her overcome this. And if we can put a few repetitions in, we can start to capture that behavior. So again, oh, Eileen, what's this? What's this? Pressure on, pressure off. Yes. Oh, good girl, what's this? Pressure on. Yes, pressure off. Oh, good girl. And then you get a treat. Pressure on, pressure off. Yes. Pressure on. Oh, this one, now she's back into digger heels in. Off. Yes, oh, good girl. Oh, you're so clever. Oh, you're so clever. So this is beautiful. So now, because we're putting the reps in, we're starting to capture the behavior. So this will be another lovely one. She's distracted by puppy. Pressure comes on. Eileen. Yes, oh, good girl. Now that one was beautiful. I want to stop and pause there and talk about that one. So she's distracted by puppy at the gate. She went towards puppy pressure for the lead comes on which 15 minutes ago was making her go whoa dig my heels in but she's already starting to learn to turn that pressure off come to me follow my guidance and direction and that pressure shuts off and what i'm going to show you when we've done a few more drills is how you then use that with the positive free shaping the positive luring as part of the early stages of the perfect puppy course which is why a puppy at Eileen's age can have such perfect heel work so young. So this will be a perfect example. So she's now starting to engage with me and there's this time there's a bit more space. So I'm leveling this up now. So pressure comes on, Eileen. Yes, oh, you such a good girl. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm even gonna give you two treats. Oh yes, lots of vocal inflection, lots of positive praise. Yes, we're using a little bit of lead pressure, but we're balanced. We want to help her with the lead pressure, understand what it is that we want. So that way we can use the combination of the two to achieve insane levels of success. And that's the same uh, theory for all tools, whether it's slip leads, choke chains, prong collars, e-collars. They can be used incredibly positively when you help the dog understand how to use it, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Minor pressure that isn't painful, it's just a little bit of pressure, and to shut that pressure off, follow my guidance and direction with the command that I've already taught you. So Eileen understands what coming to me is because we've been doing lots of recall work. So this is another good one. So pressure's on. Eileen, she's distracted. Oh yes, such a clever girl, such a clever girl. And we're already making huge progress. So I'm gonna really try and lure her now. So she's chewing, pressure on. Eileen, yes, pressure off. Oh, so clever, so clever. Yes, pressure on. And now she's eager to follow me. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, so clever, oh, so clever. And now if you watch this, when she's finished eating this one, now this is where the magic with heel happens. Eileen, Eileen. Pressure's on, pressure turns off. Oh yes. Oh yes, so clever. And you can have a treat now. Oh yes, pressure's on. She knows how to turn the pressure off now because we're putting the reps in. Pressure's on. Come on. Yes, pressure instantly goes off. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I probably expected a little bit too much of her there. Oh, yes! Oh, you're doing so well! When you're in the heel position, 
treat comes in. And as you can imagine, drilling that, repping that, layering that up, expecting more steps, and I'm gonna let you break. Now she can go and run. Two more days, we'll have Eileen walking perfectly to heal with that combination of lead pressure and positive reinforcement. So if you're one of the people following our Perfect Puppy course, you'll have seen lots of the drills in terms of luring them into a position, marking it, reinforcing it, starting to take steps, adding the lead. Eileen can do that inside. We bring it outside and that additional level of distraction is stressing her out a little bit. Not too much, but it's enough to make a digger heels in, panic, get a bit frightened and respond in the wrong way. This is a perfect example, oh, you've missed it, of how not very clever she is. She just had her head stuck in that fence thinking that she could squeeze through one of those gaps. Classic English Mastiff. Puppy, on the other hand, on the other side of the fence, learnt this in 10 seconds. A Labrador will learn it in 10 seconds. Eileen, like I say, it's going to take us a little longer for her to really start to comprehend and understand that process. But that's what I want you to understand, because now if you can imagine, at the minute I'm having to guide her from the back, but if she drifts off too far, lead pressure comes on, she now understands how to turn that off, is to follow the pressure, and when she follows the pressure, it shuts off, and when she drops in, she gets rewarded. If she goes too far in front of me, pressure comes on, to turn that pressure off, she needs to drop back in, pressure goes off, she gets praised and reinforced. We layer that up over time, we repeat it, we practice it, we drill it, we put in the effort, and that is how you have a perfectly uh, heel walking dog at very young ages. You help them shape the behavior in a positive way, and then you use the balanced approach of using little bits of pressure when they're doing the wrong thing, but tons of praise and reward when they're doing the good thing. They put the two things together, voila, you can learn, teach a dog any behavior you've ever wanted. So I hope that was helpful. Again, you've jumped in on a very live, problem that we were doing kind of off camera me and joe were working on this ourselves um and we're like let's get the camera and bring you guys on for the journey of how i go about kind of helping a dog that's more fearful that might want to dig its heels in and not walk versus a dog that's pulling on the end of the lead because we're going to do more videos on that you can go back and watch some of the older videos of dogs that are aggressive pullers forward but the uh, the principle is exactly the same a little bit of pressure Dog learns how to shut the pressure off. When the pressure goes off, we apply lots of praise, positive reinforcement, jobs are good. And it really isn't rocket science if you can just understand the mindset and the theory involved.